Hello, and welcome to the National Agricultural Library's Making Data Machine Readable webinar. My name is Erin Antonoli, Knowledge Services Metadata Librarian, and I will be presenting this webinar today. Also with me is John Sears, Ag Data Commons Data Scientist, who will help answer questions during the Q&A portion of the webinar. We will begin by examining what it means for data to be machine readable, discuss why this is important, take a look at preferred machine readable data formats, give a brief overview of the tidy data principles, walk through an example of how to convert tabular data into a machine readable format, and conclude with time for questions. When someone says data are machine readable, what do they mean? What exactly is machine readable? Simply put, machine readable data are data or metadata presented in a format that can be easily processed by a computer. In fact, machine readable items are all around us and in our everyday use. Driver's licenses and passports all have a human readable section as well as a machine readable code along the bottom with strings of letters and numbers that correspond to the bearer's name, state and country of issue, birth date, nationality, and more. Barcodes are on nearly everything we purchase and allow computers to automatically look up an item in their system when scanned, making both checkout lines and inventory counts more automated. QR codes can be scanned by smartphones and automatically lead users to websites without having to type a single letter. And these are just a few examples. We increasingly rely on computers to quickly and accurately process information, but that doesn't happen automatically. The information must be formatted and presented in a consistent manner so that computers can understand what they're reading. While machine-readable products can be found in nearly all aspects of modern life, today we are concentrating on research data and files that often accompany them. There are two types of machine-readable file formats. Human-readable data that is marked up so that it can also be read by machines, and data file formats intended principally for processing by machines. Some examples of hybrid human-readable and machine-readable data include microformats, RDFA, and HTML. Formats that are intended first and foremost for machine processing include CSV, RDF, XML, and JSON. However, Extensible Markup Language, or XML, is designed to be both human and machine-readable to someone who is used to dealing with that format and Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformation, or XSLT, is used to improve presentation of the data for human readability. For example, XSLT can be used to automatically render XML into a PDF format. A good rule of thumb is that machine-readable data can be automatically transformed for human readability but, generally speaking, the reverse is not true. I just threw a lot of file format names at you, and there's a good chance you don't use all of them regularly. However, it's important to remember that just because data are digitally accessible does not necessarily mean that they are machine-readable. Physical materials are obviously not machine-readable, but digital materials are not automatically machine-readable either. A digitally accessible document may be online, making it easier for humans to access using computers, but its content is much harder to extract, transform, and process using computer programming logic if it is not machine-readable re machine format. For example, PDF and Word documents containing formatting, layouts with charts or tables of data, JPEG or TIFF format images and graphics, scanned materials, and other visual designs are digital, but not machine-readable. Even a Microsoft Excel file is not necessarily machine-readable if it is not structured properly. All data has some type of structure associated with it, 
But structured data, as we are examining here, has a different connotation. Structured data refers to data where the structural relation between elements is explicit in the way that the data is stored on a computer disk. For instance, XML and JSON are common formats that allow many types of structure to be represented. These may not be the prettiest formats for a human to look at to retrieve data, but the structure is consistent, meaning the same types of values get recorded in the same place and in the same format, which is what machines need in order to interpret the data. The internal representation of, for example, word processing documents or PDF documents reflects the positioning of entities on the page, not their logical structure, which is correspondingly difficult or impossible to extract automatically. These types of documents rely more on human readability and are tailored to be visual rather than reused by machines. Machine-readable data, by nature, adheres to the Force 11 FAIR principles in a way that other non-machine-readable data formats cannot. Because computers can more easily process the data, and data is recorded in a standard way, data becomes more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. This data relies on internal structure more than visual placement of information, and this flexibility means it can potentially be interpreted by a number of computer programs in a more reliable and consistent way. As a practical example that many of you have likely encountered, have you ever tried to open a document with an older version of the software that originally created it, only to find the formatting discrepancies that skew the entire purpose of the document or even make it unusable? that scenario is eliminated with machine-readable data. Whether the data is used for creating catalogs or for presenting research results, machine-readable data can be searched, compared, and processed more easily and accurately. For entities like governments, who have a mission to be more transparent to their citizens, more accessible data is key. For those creating and submitting data on behalf of the U.S. government, in 2013, an executive order was passed to make open and machine-readable the de default for government information. So moving forward, if your data and other files can be formatted in a machine-readable way, this is required. In the grand scheme of things, providing data in a proprietary or non-machine-readable format is better than not providing it at all but there are steps we can take when processing data for sharing or producing new data to make it more machine-readable and stable. The method and format you choose depends on the type of data you are producing. For tabular data, such as strings of recorded observations, financial reports, and statistics, the preferred format is CSV, which stands for comma-separated value, though JSON and XML may also be acceptable. Avoid the use of proprietary Excel formats that Microsoft Excel creates by default. For textual data, such as reports and publications, try to use HTML, plain text, or accessible PDFs, rather than regular PDF or Word documents. Where structured or tabular data exists within the textual data, it should be published separately in a CSV or another appropriate format. For data that has a geographic or location element to it, GeoJSON, CSV, KML, or GML are all good options for publishing. Shapefiles and tab files should be avoided where possible due to the overly complex, proprietary, and aging nature of the formats. Now that you know what machine-readable data is and why it's important, we will review how to make your data machine-readable. Again, not all data can be saved in a machine-readable format, but knowing when adjusting format is possible and acting accordingly will go a long way to making sure you're doing what you can to make your data the best it can be. There are many ways to convert many types of files and formats into machine-readable information, 
but in the interest of time, we will focus on the most accessible examples for the bulk of scientific researchers. In fact, you may have already formatted your data this way when you ran stats programs as part of the process to analyze your data. We will walk through an example of how to convert tabular data in Excel format to a machine-readable CSV format. Of course, this is easier to set up if you plan to organize and save data in CSV format from the start. So if you're at the beginning of your project and formulating your data management plan, please take this into consideration. But since that is not always possible, the next best thing is to make existing data as machine-readable as possible and be more mindful moving forward. We address CSV format first and foremost because it can be produced using software already available to most of us, including the Microsoft Office Suite and Google Docs. A CSV document should be formatted as follows. Remove any comments, metadata, and aggregate statistics intended to provide context or make the information easier for people to read. If you have to include this information, consider making another column for it, or include the contextual information in a data dictionary. Units, descriptions, functions, calculations, and other information about the data should not appear in the same column as the data itself, but can easily be included in a data dictionary. The first row of the file should contain column names corresponding to the data contained in each column. Data should be free of formatting and any special characters. For instance, numeric or currency cells should just be numbers without any formatting or non-numeric characters. This includes the use of color, bolded and italicized text, and other visual aids. Again, if you want to specify the units measured, and you should be very clear about labeling your data, place that information in a separate column and labeled appropriately, if possible, and consider creating a data dictionary that can summarize all of the metadata for your data files. Each cell should have only one piece of information in it, and the format should be consistent within each column. Make a separate document file for each table of your data. Do not put multiple tables on a single worksheet or create multiple worksheets in a single file. These rules are necessary because formatting is not carried forward into CSV files. In addition, the inclusion of extra information like metadata and human-readable com comments makes it harder for computer code to parse and read the data through analysis and programming techniques. If you want to have a working Excel document with any of the previously mentioned features, this doesn't mean you can never use Excel functions again. Just make sure you also include a final version in the CSV format that is formatted in a machine-readable way. In any case, if you are working with legacy or pre-existing data files, you should never modify the original document. Always duplicate the original and edit the new file if you want to create a machine-readable version. What's done is done, and you want to keep the original intact in case you need to go back to verify anything. A great resource for learning about structuring machine-readable data is the Tidy Data Paper, linked at the bottom of the page. The notion of tidy data outlines a standard way of mapping the meaning of a dataset to its structure. A dataset is messy or tidy depending on how rows, columns, and tables are matched up with observations, variables, and types. While tidy data is not exclusively machine-readable, the principles are spot-on with the goal of creating a file that can be easily interpreted by machines. In tidy data, each variable forms a column, each observation forms a row, and each type of observational unit forms a table. Tidy data makes it easy for an, anal an analyst or a computer to extract needed variables because it provides a standard way of structuring a data set. While the order of variables and observations does not affect analysis, a good ordering makes it easier to scan the raw values. 
One way of organizing variables is by their role in the analysis. Are values fixed by the design of the data collection, or are they measured during the course of the experiment? Fixed variables describe the experimental design and are known in advance. Measured variables are what we actually measure in the study. Fixed variables should come first, followed by the measured variables, each ordered so that related variables are contiguous. Rows can then be ordered by the first variable, breaking ties with the second and subsequent fixed variables. This is an extremely brief overview of the principles of tidy data, but I urge you to visit the paper for a more in-depth look at the intricacies of formatting data to be tidy. Let's try an example together. We will reformat a data file that, while accurate and contains a wealth of information, is not tidy and is certainly not machine readable. However, a restructure can make this data machine-readable and compliant with U.S. federal objectives to produce machine-readable data. This example is an Excel format data file from the Ag Data Commons. We will walk through how to reformat and present this data to be machine-readable and compliant with open data policy. Starting from the top and working our way down, we can see there are multiple column headers with cell formatting on this spreadsheet. To be machine readable, we need to have a single column header. Next, we see this file contains multiple worksheets. All of these are fine for a working document because it often is more convenient to have everything in one place. Also, depending on whether there are any functions, macros, or other automated values being generated, an Excel document may be warranted while preparing the data. However, for the final version of your data to share with others, our objective is to transform this data into a format that is machine-readable. First, we want to separate the worksheets into separate data files. So, I will copy and paste the information on this first worksheet tab into a new document, and we'll go from this to this. Notice now with the new document, I only have a single worksheet in this file. I will then have to separate out each worksheet from the original file in the same way. Because there were a lot of worksheets, this is an example of where planning on the front end can save some time when it comes time to submit your data. 10 worksheets means I have to repeat this process 10 times. Next, I will turn my attention to the column headers. Currently, there are three headers, and I need to narrow this down to one. This doesn't mean I need to lose the information, but rather I need to format a little differently. The first column header looks like the one I want to keep, as the final header. So I need to figure out how to account for the information in the second and third header rows. If we zoom in a bit and expand the columns and wrap the text, we can see the second row is a description of the column, and the third row looks like it records units. This information can't easily be included directly in the spreadsheet but can and should be included in a separate data dictionary, especially if many of the worksheets reuse components. Since the Ag Data Commons will soon be adding a feature to help users create data dictionaries more seamlessly, we won't focus too much on that today, but we can take a brief look at how a data dictionary would be formatted in this case. The data dictionary is a separate document that outlines every field used in the data files, and includes descriptions, units of measurement, character types, and whether the fields are mandatory. In keeping this descriptive information separate from the data, the data is more easily machine-readable and researchers have potential to go into even more detail about each element in their data files without impacting machine usability. So in reformatting, we will remove the information in the second and third columns to achieve this. a single column header listing the variables with observation data in all the rows below.
and the descriptive information we removed from the second and third rows of the data spreadsheet is subsequently transferred to a data dictionary. Here we can see the name of the spreadsheet in the first column, the column headers for the spreadsheet in the second column, and the exact descriptions from the original spreadsheet transferred to the description column here. I have also included other information about the data in the rest of the columns. We offer guidelines and templates for creating your own data dictionary in the Ag Data Commons submission manual, which can be found under the About tab on the Ag Data Commons. This reformatting and data dictionary creation gets that extraneous information out of the data spreadsheet and into an informative format that is itself also machine readable if saved as a CSV. Back to our single header spreadsheet. We have one last step to make this fully machine readable. We need to save this file as a CSV. The default in Microsoft Office is to save spreadsheets as an Excel document, but we can do a Save As and choose the CSV file format. Once you navigate to where you want to save the file, name the file using your project's established naming convention, and then in the Save As Type section, choose CSV, Delimited. Once you save, you will have a machine-readable CSV version of your data file. You should keep track of the steps you use to format your data from start to finish so you or members of your team can repeat the process for the rest of your data and keep everything consistent. Machine-readable data are often and increasingly required as final products for federal data, but they have many other benefits as well. I mentioned earlier in this presentation that machine-readable files could generally be automatically transformed into human-readable format. Here is an example of this process in action. When researchers upload their machine-readable CSV resource files to the Ag Data Commons, for instance, they can create instant data visualizations using the built-in platform. Here we can see an example of a graph created from a CSV data file which can be found in the data set at the link below the chart. This chart is created on the fly using the Ag Data Commons repository software because the program can automatically extract the column headers and row values from properly formatted CSV files to visually interpret that file for the users. In conclusion, machine-readable data is highly desired because of its ability to be more easily interpreted by machines and interoperable across many platforms and applications. Machine-readable formats go hand-in-hand -hand with open data policies and are in many cases required as the final format for U.S. federal data. Preferred formats are generally non-proprietary, and making sure your data is tidy and well-organized will help you maintain machine-readable results. And finally, we walked through a sample data format conversion from Excel to CSV and reviewed how to put these principles to use. I mentioned these links in the presentation, but I'm including them here again for review. The first is a link to the Open Data Handbook, specifically the File Format section, and the second link is to the Tidy Data Paper. Also included is the link to the email for the Ag Data Commons Curator inbox if you have any questions for our team. And now we will open it up for questions.